What's happening guys, Cowboy here, and it's finally time to bring you the updated build guide for The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Now this is an end game build making it ideal for the Blood and Wine DLC and more so for New Game Plus, where in our previous build we had a focus on fast attacks and sign usage with minimal alchemy, now we have alchemy as a focal point of the build. Additionally, we still have a focus on fast attacks and we've worked in heavy attacks for some synergy, and despite having no points actually allocated in signs, our sign intensity is actually higher than ever before thanks to the introduction of the mutation system. Now while this build can take quite a bit of time to create, I will say that it is quite likely the most powerful build in the entire game. And on top of that, it's also a ton of fun to play because you have plenty of flexibility in your offensive options, being able to use alchemy, signs, fast attacks, heavy attacks, uh, bombs, crossbow, all that good stuff. So to get started, I'll be going through the skill point allocation, then I'll be moving on to the gear, and to wrap up, we'll have a montage of clips showcasing what the build is capable of in combat, with nice little timestamps in the description of the video for your convenience. So to jump on into the character panel, at first glance you can see we have six combat skills up top, five alchemy down below, one general, and then two more alchemy skills in the additional slots that were unlocked via mutation. Now while I don't have the other two additional slots that can be unlocked, quite simply, there's not enough experience to be gained in New Game to get those. Despite that, I will go into what skills I would suggest for New Game Plus players. But moving into the combat tree, we're going to pick up Muscle Memory, increasing our fast attack damage. Precise Blows, increasing our fast attack critical hit chance and damage. Whirl, because it is a fantastic AoE ability for multiple human enemies, and additionally, but probably the most damaging ability in the game against larger monsters that are staggered or those that you have an opening against. Rend because it is a fantastic on-demand burst with a strong attack and on top of that it has very powerful synergies with both our decoctions as well as our three-piece bonus for the cat school gear. Sunder armor because quite simply reducing the enemy's damage resistance will increase our own damage. And then the last skill we're going to pick up is Resolve, because having our Adrenaline points maintain at 100% is very important to maximize the damage potential of this build. Now in New Game Plus, when you have a lot more points to play around with, I would actually suggest replacing Resolve with Razor Focus, quite simply because with Razor Focus, your Adrenaline point gain is so high that even losing Adrenaline points is inconsequential compared to how fast you gain them. But being as we had a lot of points we had to put into alchemy, I wanted to stick with one of the skills that we had to get to reach the later tiers in this tree. Moving on over into the alchemy tree, though, the first thing we're going to want to pick up is Acquired Tolerance. Now, this is hands down probably one of the best abilities in the game. In my opinion, it should be used in every build. Uh, when you have all your alchemic formulas and you have this at level 3, you'll have enough toxicity to where you can use three decoctions without exceeding the safe threshold, which, needless to say, Three decoctions at once is very, very powerful. Uh, moving on from there, we're going to want to pick up Poison Blades. Having this is going to give us the 15% chance to poison, and the damage from that is quite significant. Now, one thing I want to point out in comparison is in the previous build, I used Crippling Strikes. I would highly suggest avoiding that skill because the bleeding effect applied via Crippling Strikes is actually kind of nerfed in comparison to what your sword can do with just a 15% chance to bleed. Um... Poison Blades, on the other hand, actually applies poison that is scaled up to your damage level, so it's not a set small amount like Crippling Strikes is, but instead this can be quite a large potential damage boost. Uh, moving on from there, we're going to pick up Tissue Transmutation, which quite simply, because we're running three decoctions, will give us an extra 3,000 vitality. And then after that, we're going to run Endure Pain, which will increase our maximum vitality by 50% when we exceed the safe threshold. So three decoctions, we are still safe. Upon popping one potion, we'll exceed the safe threshold. But as you can see, just looking in general, we have 1,575 vitality from our bonuses. We're going to have 3,000 vitality from this. We have the natural vitality that we gain from just leveling up in our gear. So with Endure Pain, we actually come in just under 14,000 vitality. And that is with light gear, not heavy gear. So needless to say, that is a lot of health. Uh, moving on from there, we're going to grab Synergy. Very, very powerful ability. Probably one of the most powerful in the game, increasing those bonuses. Just to better visualize this, as you can see, we're getting 60%, 60%, and then 900 Vitality for um, triple-slotted skills. Without Synergy, you can see that goes down to 450, and then 40 and 40. So, you know, just having Synergy on alone, like, without even considering the Vitality bonuses, Synergy is giving us 40% more attack power, which is huge. 
Moving into the other skills, though, that we have, you are going to pick up a Protective Coating just to give us a flat 25% protection boost against the monster of the oil we're using. And on top of that, you'll want to make sure that you get all of your oils up to max because a max oil will give you a 50% attack power boost, but we'll go more into that when we get over to the gear. And then the last one we're going to want to pick up is Hunter Instinct, making it so that when our adrenaline points are at their maximum, critical hit damage against the targeted enemy type is increased by 100%. And obviously, this is why we ended up going with Resolve, just to make sure we can maintain that uh, those adrenaline points to maximize the chance of getting that and procking that off. Now, as for the two additional slots... Um, what I would suggest is the first skill you'll want to pick up is Killing Spree. If Toxicity is above zero, each opponent killed increases critical hit chance by 10% for the duration of that fight. Needless to say, this actually gets up quite a bit higher as you level it up, but it makes you extremely devastating. And then for our last skill, you have a little bit more flexibility here. Uh, depending on what you like, the two I would suggest would be either Side Effects, giving you a chance of getting an extra random potion, which is always beneficial, or alternatively, if you really like using bombs, Cluster Bombs is a ton of fun to play with. Had a little bit of time testing this, and it was quite hilarious seeing a uh, multi-bomb go off. Very devastating. So looking more in-depth at our actual mutation, which is what's making this all possible, we are going for Euphoria. Now the fantastic thing about Euphoria is obviously this build has a very strong emphasis on swordplay, but on top of that, even though we have nothing going into signs, because this will increase our sign intensity, we basically hit the critical threshold on all of our signs. So Igni will always light foes on fire, Ard will always knock foes down if it can. All in all, fantastic mutation. Probably the best in the game for hybrid builds. Um, compared to some of the other choices, just to look through briefly, Toxic Blood actually tested this out, not worthwhile at all. Looking at the Combat Tree ones, Sword Attacks deal 25% more damage. You know, that sounds great and all, but 25% more damage versus um, going with this, where we're looking at a maximum of 200% damage, that's pretty OP. Uh, Bloodbath, in a similar nature, you know, it can get up to 250, but if we take damage, we end up losing that bonus immediately, which is kind of bad. Um, the only other one that I really, really like out of all these potentials is going to be Piercing Cold, but that is actually reserved for a sign build, one where you focus on Ard, so obviously not as um, important here. You know, if you're going for a very strong side build, Piercing Cold, definitely a lot of fun to play with, but given the nature of this build, you are going to be best off going with Euphoria, hands down. Uh, so the last skill that we have in our tree, of course, is our general, and that's going to be Cat School Technique. Because we're wearing all light armor, this just gives us a 20% increase to our fast attack damage and a 100% increase to our critical hit damage. So obviously a very, very nice boost from that. So hopping on over into the inventory, you can see that we are still running the feline armor with the Grandmaster Feline Gauntlets, the Grandmaster Feline Boots, the Grandmaster Feline Trousers, and then lastly, the Mastercrafted Feline Armor. Now, obviously, if you want to maximize your character, feel free to go for the Grandmaster Feline Armor. Personally, I really don't like the look of the hood that it adds on, so I decided to just stick with Mastercrafted. Uh, if you're on PC, you can actually use a mod to remove the hood, so that's no longer a concern. On console, you can wear the glasses on Geralt or use a mask, and that'll also get rid of the hood, but I didn't want to deal with all that, and I just, you know, I really, really like the aesthetics of the Mastercrafted versus the Grandmaster. Uh, additionally, just looking at the color scheme, you may notice it's all black. We have black armor dyes on all four pieces as well. Uh, as for the glyphs, we have Igni Sign Intensity, but to be completely honest, you can really use whatever glyphs you want. We're already going to have so much intensity because of the Euphoria mutation that it doesn't really matter, and these glyphs are only going to come into play when you don't have three decoctions, which more often than not, you will have those all up. Uh, as for our weapons, first up we have the Silver Sword, and that is Arendite. Now this is, hands down, the best Silver Sword in the game. Uh, for two reasons. One, each blow generates charges which increase sword damage by 10%. So literally, every time you hit something, 10% more damage, 10% more damage, 10% more damage. That's absurd. On top of that, the secondary effect, killing a foe with a fully loaded sword will expend its charge to permanently increase the weapon's damage. So in short, this sword will level up with you. Now, this sword comes from a quest in the Blood and Wine DLC called There Can Be Only One. It involves um, 
basically exhibiting the five chivalric virtues of knights in Toussaint. So this spans across a bunch of different things that you can do in the Blood and Wine DLC. So you may want to look into this quest a little bit deeper just to make sure you don't mess it up and lose out your chance at this sword. Fantastic weapon all around. It doesn't initially come with rune slots, but through using the rune right that we unlock in the Hearts of Stone DLC, we can add three slots. Uh, because I already have Poison through Coat of Blades and Burn Chance through Igni, I decided to go with Bleeding to ensure that I have access to all three damage over time effects, even when using the Silver Sword. As for our Steel Sword, we are using the Toussaint Steel Sword. Now this is probably the best Steel Sword in the game prior to New Game Plus, with Armor Piercing, Critical Hit Damage Bonus, Critical Hit Chance, Burning, and Bleeding. On top of that, we have three slots, so we just stock it at Attack Power. Feel free to go with one that you prefer, though. Uh, you actually get this from the Treasure Hunt quest, The Last Exploits of Selena's Gang. Uh, this involves getting a key off the south coast of the cemetery in Beauclair, and then following that, you're going to end up going down into the catacombs, and you'll find the uh, diagram for this sword down there. Uh, moving on down, uh, we have Geralt of Rivia's crossbow. This is from the Knightly Tournament quest. Not really needed. You can use whatever crossbow you want. I barely use the crossbow as is, so not a big concern. But going into our decoctions, first up we have Troll Decoction. Now this thing is probably your best friend, especially on Death March. Uh, since we don't regenerate health at all on Death March, even when we're meditating, this will ensure that our health is always topped off with 100 vitality regeneration when we're out of combat. On top of that, Having 20 Vitality Regeneration in combat is enough to offset the health loss we would experience from going over our Toxicity Threshold, which is quite nice. Moving on from there, we have a very well-known combination running Echidna and Arch Griffin. Now, Echidna we had in the previous build, performing actions that consume stamina regenerates Vitality, so obviously any time we cast a sign, we're getting Vitality back. But now with using Arch Griffin, as you can see, if any stamina is available, strong attacks consume all of it and reduce the Struck Foe's vitality by 5% after their normal damage is calculated. So just to go more in-depth into the synergy here we're looking at, and this is a very disgusting combo. So, we're going to have Rend. We're going to use Rend to open combat, which is going to ignore enemy defense, increase critical hit chance by 50% on our strong attack. On top of that, because we are running the... Arch Griffin decoction, that strong attack, aside from already ignoring enemy's defense and having 50% increased critical hit chance, it's going to reduce their vitality by 5%, and it's going to stuck away our stamina, and it's going to heal us because of a kidney decoction, and then on top of that, because we have the three-piece feline set, it's going to increase the damage of our fast attacks by 30% for five seconds after. So very, very beautiful synergy right there. It just all comes together and allows you to open with a strong attack, go into fast attacks, and just devastate everything. Uh, as for the main potion we have on our hot bar, we're running Superior Tawny Oil. We already have fantastic stamina regeneration through using Light Armor, but with running Superior Tawny Oil, our stamina regen is so fast that we can basically just freely spam signs in combat uh, without really having to worry about stamina at all. So, all in all, very nice. Uh, last thing I want to point out is the one bomb I always have on, and that is Superior Northern Wind. Really is fantastic when you level this up. It'll freeze everything for 10 seconds. Absolutely devastating when taking on larger groups of enemies. Uh, on top of that, giving us the chance of an instant kill. Always fun when there's large groups like the Hanses you're going to fight in Blood and Wine. Some final things to mention before we jump into the stats. Uh, obviously, make sure that you get all of your oils upgraded to superior. This is going to give us a 50% attack power boost against whatever we're fighting, which is quite nice in combat. Uh, and then on top of that, you want to make sure you get all of your decoction and potion recipes. As I mentioned, making sure that gets your toxicity up nice and high. Uh, honorable mention does go to superior thunderbolt, giving us an extra 35% attack power boost and 100% critical hit chance during storms. But we're already so absurd, this just kind of puts us into god status. So, something to keep in mind. Uh, but jumping on over into the stats, as you can see, just at base without all of our stuff up, we're looking at a 15% critical hit chance on our Silver Sword fast attacks, a 30% critical hit chance on our Steel Sword fast attacks, Vitality just under 14,000 as I mentioned, Toxicity with all the recipes that we know is up to 271. Because of Euphoria, you can see our Sign Intensity is at 214, giving us a 141% chance to stagger with Ard, a 100% chance to burn with Igni, 36% uh, slowdown with Yurden, and Axie that lasts almost 15 seconds. All in all, it is just totally awesome. 
So as I previously mentioned, for combat, we're going to be going all over the place and uh, just showing some short clips of combat. First up, we have a slizzard, though. Just for documentation's sake as well, hopping on into options and gameplay, you can see we are playing on Death March with enemy upscaling on. So let's take on the first thing with the slizzard. Come here, buddy. Stop that. Where's it going? Look at it. It's trying to run. Doesn't want anything to do with Gary. Look, it's already half dead, too. And then pretty much as soon as we got the world combo, down it goes. There we go. Bunch of rot fiends. They're dead. Alright, bunch of Kikimoras. Let's go on nest. They're all dead. Alright, now we got a bandit camp. Go uh, take out that archer first. The hands never forgive the He's in half. Come on, boys. And they're all instantly on fire. Bleeding, poison, and burning. Nice. Of course, 100% knockdown chance means we can just do that anytime we want. Oh! Absolutely wrecked. Now we got a fork tail. Also dead. Alright, so another monster den. Ooh, vampires! Ooh, this'll be good. Ooh, okay. Something that's a, a challenge for once. Just kidding. You're not a challenge. What are you? You're not a vampire, are you? I oh, know you are. You're just a crazy type I've never seen before. This thing's actually making me pop a Quen. It's impressive. I mean, it's already bleeding, so it's gonna die anyway. Garkins. Hmm. Huh. Alright, and to wrap things up, I got one more bandit camp for you guys. He's dead. He's in half. He's cut up. Like, it's, it's just absurd. Doesn't matter what we fight. This build slaughters everything. And I'm pretty sure I just got a double critical hit there for like 30,000 damage. So either way, guys, that is the build. You know, like I said, it doesn't matter if we're fighting bandits or new vampires that we've never even seen before. This build slaughters everything. So either way, if you enjoyed it, make sure to try it on out. It is a ton of fun. really is. Uh, on top of that... If you want to see more of this in action, we are moving on towards wrapping up the Blood and Wine DLC. So the next couple episodes, we'll be moving into kind of the last stages of the main quest, fighting a bunch of bosses. So if you want to see the build tear bosses apart, make sure to stay tuned for that. And either way, thanks for coming on by, and we'll catch you guys next time.